Chancellor, we now come to the conferment of our first honorary graduate. Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great privilege to introduce Philip Rutnam to you on such a special day. Cranfield seeks to develop and recognize influential and innovative leaders, and Philip absolutely epitomizes these qualities. He is widely regarded as one of the country's most capable senior civil servants. The British Civil Service has a world-renowned reputation for its professionalism and the quality of its people, and in particular for identifying and developing highly capable senior people to deal with the demands and complexities of modern society and government. Philip is such a person. Educated at Cambridge and at Harvard, Philip has an illustrious career behind him, and of course in front of him. He joined the Civil Service in 1987 and has held senior positions in a number of major government departments, he has been a senior treasury official and has represented the UK at the European Investment Bank, as well as spending time outside of the civil service, working in corporate finance at Morgan Stanley in Hong Kong, and later helping to establish and run Ofcom, the communications regulator in the UK. In 2009, he joined the Department for Business, Innovation and Skills as Director General, Business and Skills, and in 2012, became Permanent Secretary at the Department for Transport, serving with distinction for five years. The Secretary of State for Transport recognized Philip's outstanding record and business-focused skills as tremendous assets to that department. The head of the civil service praised his strong strategic skills, wide knowledge of the business world, and his drive and appetite to tackle future challenges. Philip took up his current position as Permanent Secretary at the Home Office in April of this year, and the Cabinet Secretary praised his strong track record of leadership and achievement, and the Prime Minister, Theresa May, said he would bring a wealth of leadership and delivery experience, including working on major projects and addressing the long-term needs of the UK. Philip is clearly a high, very highly respected senior civil servant with extensive experience and many achievements. But he, does not even, but he does even more than this. In April 2015, he became the civil service disability champion, and he brings his drive and energy to this very important role too. He has described that role as daunting and hugely exciting, and he is highly proactive in making the civil service diverse and inclusive. He works tirelessly to reach out across that large organization and makes himself accessible, as demonstrated by his very active blog, which he manages to maintain enthusiastically in spite of the enormous demands of his permanent secretary position. This is a testament to the passion and commitment he brings to that very important agenda, and one that we share at Cranfield. He has set out clear priorities to progress, for those, to progress for those with disabilities, including workplace adjustments, career development, tackling mental health issues, the crucial role of leaders in creating a culture that includes and develops people, and overall, attacking gaps between disabled and non-disabled colleagues. Despite his successful and demanding professional life, he tries to keep a balance between work and the rest of his life too and not allow work to dominate every area. He is a keen cyclist, runs, and enjoys walking. Philip has completed the 177-mile Offers Dyke Walk along the border between Wales and England, and his next project is to walk the 277-mile Pennine Way uh, from Derbyshire to Scotland. Philip has been quoted as saying that, fundamentally, at the end of the day, you have to keep work in perspective. In so many ways, Philip Rutnam is a fine role model for everyone in this room, and especially for young people embarking on their careers and lives, achieving remarkable professional success and public service, championing the cause of others, and ensuring that all is kept in perspective. And so, Chancellor, I'm authorized by the Council and the Senate to ask you to confer on Mr. Philip Rutnam the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Of science and Norris Kaiser. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. 
Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, and above all, graduates. Thank you for this kind and wonderful honor, and thank you too to Professor John for his kind words. I hope that I can live up to half of them. Chancellor, it is a huge honor for me to receive this award. In my professional life, I have spent many years trying to create strong relationships between the worlds of research and learning, business and public policy. Cranfield has always been an exemplar of this, how to do this well. So I feel both privileged and humbled to be recognized in this way by this institution. While I'm grateful to Professor John for his kind words, graduates, this day is about you and the next stages of your life. Cranfield's mission is to create leaders. That is now your job. Wherever you go next in life, try and lead by example. Demonstrate the skills you have learnt at this institution and encourage the next generation of leaders. That is how we grow both as a nation and as individuals. Your education does not stop with the certificate you receive today. The world is changing rapidly through technology and social change. The work of science fiction writers just 20 years ago is becoming reality through technological change. Autonomy is bringing driverless cars and drones into our everyday lives. The pace of this change requires us to continue to question, to challenge, to explore new ways of thinking. What some people dismissed as impossible just decades ago is fast becoming a reality. Now you will need to adapt to the rapidly changing environment that you find yourself in. Education is the key for you in order for you to do this. Graduates, when I was thinking about making this speech today, I started to think about what advice I would like to have received when I was in the early years of my career. What advice would I have given to a younger me? And Chancellor, I think above all, my advice would be that everything you seek to achieve, you will need to achieve with and through other people. So think about how you develop and maintain relationships, relationships even begun today here at Cranfield. I said at the start that graduates, this day is about you. What I should have said is that it's about you and the team that got you here, whether that is friends or family or colleagues. And this day is for those people that pushed you when you thought you couldn't go any further, that challenged you when you needed someone to question you and who supported you through everything that life has thrown at you so far. Don't lose those people. They are your team and a part of your success. Find new people to collaborate with and to grow your network. Pass on what you have learned. Take your responsibility to the next generation of leaders and reflect on the knowledge of others. <coughs> My hearty congratulations to everybody graduating today. And to friends and family of those graduating today, thank you. Thank you for the part you have played in developing the next generation of leaders that sit here in front of me today. Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> Honoured guests and graduates, I'm deeply honoured to be receiving this award today. Thank you very much for bestowing it upon me. Thank you.